Okay, so this is Alice Baker, Inside Insights, I believe number seven, closing in. It's Monday. You have just returned from New Jersey, um, where basically um, Dottie had, uh, had her pregnancy terminated. You are expecting Louis, no last name, tomorrow afternoon to give you information about the Morrisons. Um, you don't know, you haven't really told Teresa who Louis is and who she will be seeing when she opens the door. Do you tell her who Louis is and what to expect or do you just want her to fall in at the deep end? I don't think Alice would think about telling her because she wouldn't be surprised. I'm not sure if Dottie is nice enough to think of it. Let's see. Dottie rolled a 57. I believe Dottie um, will take, yeah, she does, she does take um, Teresa uh, to the kitchen and she explains to her that um, Louis is a cab driver from the Bronx and he's an African-American, very charming, but that, um, and, uh, you know, and he will call to the house tomorrow and, um, and he likes coffee, mm -hmm. which you have established. So, um, well, it's been kind of a long day. Um, do you want to do anything or do you just go to bed? I After, think like, you know, 10 o'clock or so. Yeah, I think just going mm -hmm. to bed, enjoying dinner, mm -hmm. uh, just relaxing a little bit and then. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you said, it has been a long day. You go to bed. Do you set the alarm because you're still on breakfast duty? That hasn't changed. Yes. Okay. You go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You dream. No. We don't yes, like do. dreams in this. No, no, no. It is white completely white it's kind of like a sensation like you're standing in a huge white space it doesn't have walls it doesn't have ceilings it doesn't even have a floor you're just standing but you're standing on solid ground and you basically see not too far away from you um it's it's almost like you're watching a film um you know, when, 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 when there is a film being made where somebody's walking through a room and you kind of like, you are the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see a, a hallway, mm -hmm. there's a front door and you see that a letter and a newspaper fall through the letterbox. And a couple of minutes later, a young person who you identify as a young dotty mm -hmm. maybe 15 years old maybe 16 may, you know definitely younger than you would have known her wearing um a very simple dress and um an apron mm -hmm. um, she's basically cleaning her hands on the apron she goes to the to to the p p mail on the floor she picks up the newspaper she picks up the letter she reads the name on the envelope she looks left, she looks right, she folds up the letter, she puts it in her waistband under her apron and she basically straightens her apron. And then you hear somebody saying, um, Dorothy, Dorothy, um, will you make the tea? And Dorothy uh, turns around and says, yes, ma, and walks out again. You cut the scene, as it were, and you see a very, very small bedroom with two beds, very crammed. And you see a young Dottie still in her apron and dress, leaning with her back against the door, maybe to make sure that nobody enters. Mm -hmm. She takes out the letter, opens the envelope, starts reading, turns the page, reads the back of it. You can see that she's got tears in her eyes. She takes the letter. She folds it back up, but this time a lot smaller. She goes to the one wardrobe, takes out a box, and in the box you see um, what looks like a zip bag, but it's not really, it's about this size. Mm -hmm. She unzips it, it opens up, and you can see it's a book. It's a mass book mm -hmm. and apparently it and it's got like a gilded um, gilded pages. So 
you know that this might be something she might have gotten for first communion mm -hmm. she and it's kind of like it folds out like this and she can take it out and then she just has the, the 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 cover in one hand the book in the other she takes the letter puts it in the cover puts back the book closes the book and zips it up and puts it back in the box closes the box puts the box and she has to get on her tiptoes at the very very back of the wardrobe and she closes the wardrobe and she walks out and the vision fades or the dream fades Okay, the, Alice. The next, yeah. When she wakes up, she probably while getting ready, uh, she is uh, going through mind if she talks to Dotty about it, just curiously, because it doesn't really make any sense. Why on earth to see that? The other thing is, whoever sent that dream vision maybe wants exactly that, so she kind of doesn't want to ask. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. And then she basically deep in thoughts on still discussing with herself what to do. She will uh, go downstairs to the kitchen mm -hmm. and prepare breakfast. Mm -hmm. You go downstairs. Um, you prepare breakfast. Uh, Maeve joins you. Mm -hmm. I will make sure she has her breakfast as well. She, you are her most favorite human being. Um, you feed her. That's all she needs. Then she looks at you quizzically. She raises one eyebrow, bumps your, bumps her head against your leg, mm -hmm. and greets you with a loud meow. I will carefully see if she's willing to get some scratches behind the ears. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, she, I'm quite sure she will follow into the or in the kitchen. I will prepare a little bit of milk and some food and mm -hmm. yep. we'll wait and that the rest of the house is waking up. The rest of the house is waking up. Dottie is coming downstairs. Teresa is coming downstairs. Teresa is still kind of like, she finds all of this really strange. Um, so she basically has like half a cup of tea and one third of a slice of toast until Dottie makes sure that she eats and drinks more, mm -hmm. saying that it's perfectly fine for the lady of the house to get some work done as well. And um, it becomes her. Manual labor becomes Miss Baker. And... Um, well, and then basically you have breakfast. Uh, Dottie um, looks at um, Dorothy and uh, looks at um, Teresa and says, "So basically, since the two of us were aware uh, were away, um, I, I assume that the pantry is still well filled. I will just make a couple of decisions with regard to um, lunch and dinner. Um, and since you were on your own and looking after the house, um, I think it's okay if you take the day off tomorrow." Alice, we just nod. And enjoy her second cup of coffee. You enjoy a second cup of coffee while Dottie looks at the pantry. She throws a couple of um, recipe ideas at you. You get to pick. And, and then she says, well, this means we don't even have to leave the house because everything is here and ready to go. Perfect. Do you want to do anything special or do we just want to forward to two o'clock, three o'clock? I think Alice will see if she can grab Dottie without Teresa around. It's not a problem because Teresa usually, you know, Teresa will look after the house. She will clean. Today is washing day, so she's not she's not there. And Alice will be a little bit like tiptoeing around, but Dottie wouldn't know by now. Um, um, Dottie, dear, did, yes? did you have a restful night? Me, yes. I, I slept like a log. No weird dreams? Not that I can recall, but it sounds like you had a weird dream. Kind of. What was it this time? It was about you. About me? The question is, did my brain make something up or did someone want to... Tell me something. 
question is, do I want to follow them or not? What did you dream? I mean, was it a good dream? It, it was neither good nor bad. It was just a scene out of your life, as it seems. I think you were still at home with your parents. You were younger than I know you. 14, 15? But then you wouldn't know anything about my life. I mean, I, I have told you bits and pieces, but not enough to make you dream. And to tell you the truth, my life was pretty boring. <laughs> Alice would be thinking she was at the house where Dottie's parents yeah. are living. And I guess it's the house where she grew up. Yeah, the hallway does look familiar. I mean, so it has also, changed, also of course. Also the front door but, where Dottie yeah. was, it looks familiar. Yeah. It was but you've never, you've never been to her room, so you wouldn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you by any chance have like like a prayer book that was had a cover around with like a zipper and Alice would describe what she remembers from how it looks? Yes. It was a first communion present. I have it still. I don't use it, but I mean it's even then I didn't use it. It was way too valuable. Way. For me, it was. In my dream, you got a letter and you hid it in there. You can now make an insight yes, check. It would be like psychology, psychology, just to see what's happening. No, that's a ninety-five. <laughs> if it's not obvious, then. Well, it is obvious that you have hit a nerve. But I can't really pinpoint if it's just weirding her out and I know something that really happened in the past where I was not around or if the content. I have no idea what was in that letter that was not part of the... She straightens up. Well, I certainly hope that you don't know what was in the letter. So it is real what I've seen. I just don't understand how you would see it because no one, no one besides me and the person who wrote that letter know of that letter. It's in the house and I would ask you not to go looking for it. I will not, it's yours. I just wanted to know if something was, as I said, just making something up or if it was real. Now that I know it is real, it's not making it better. Because then, I suppose you would call it more a vision than a dream. But why? It was a it was a private letter. I thought so. Just looking from afar, you look disturbed reading it. Or sad, maybe more? Hurt? But it's yours, it's yours. I, I promise I will not look for it. The only question I would have is... is can you think of a link to our case? Because everything is linked to this weird case. Not in the slightest. It has nothing to do. This was completely private. It's got nothing to do with livers or with Someone skin changes or people Bronx? killing. No. Then I will stop no. investigating that, and whoever sent me that vision, go to hell. Well, probably already there, but well. Sorry for bringing that up again. The only thing that, I don't know what else you saw, but the only thing that I can tell you is that there was nothing in that letter that was in any way bad. I believe you. The only thing I saw was it was like, you know, in the, still in the movies, it was a scene that you were at the front door picking up the letter and the newspaper and then cut to a different scene in your room where you read the letter. You folded it up yes. and hid it in that 
book. That's and it. I can tell you, in a house of six, it's quite difficult to find the time to read in peace and quiet okay. a very private letter. I can imagine. I think I had to throw my sister out of the room and basically, I don't know, I, I used a pretense that she wouldn't be surprised. Well, yeah. Sorry, I had to bring that up. I was just curious. Well, it's, you know, it was a long time ago and I don't regret it. Then we will see if there's a reason why I dreamt of it. I hope not. I hope it just never comes up again. Because it's your private it's... life. It's none of my business. I don't know why I should see anything of that. It's unlikely the person who wrote the letter is long gone. The question is if the weird deity lady is still playing tricks. She shouldn't. It should work by now. Well, I wonder why she sent you that dream and not me. Because I haven't thought of that letter in a lot. Well, actually, having said this, I thought of that letter only last week. I suspected she maybe just wanna. Yeah, I think it's a game for her. Maybe she wanted you to go and look. Maybe, but she should know better. No, she. I don't think she understands you very well. Which is a good thing. I like being mysterious and. No one really can understand me except maybe one or two special people. The mysterious Alice Baker. Maybe I should write a book. I should put that on my card. Yes. P.I. The mysterious Alice Baker. Yeah. And if everything fails, we can always run away and join the circus. You could basically saw me into two pieces. Like, you know, at the fun fair. Well, not really. I mean, it's a trick. The mysterious Alice Baker and her assistant, the lovely Dottie. That sounds like a fun plan B. See? So, magical tricks on the to-do mm -hmm. list to learn. Yeah, card tricks as well. That might be something worth... And if you could juggle, that would basically... You know, I could tr try throwing knives at you. Well, I mean, maybe not. I don't think either of us should throw knives at anyone. Juggling no. sounds safer to go. Mm -hmm. Card trick sounds quite interesting. Might come in handy. Yeah. And if all else fails, you could become a professional gambler. I mean, you play poker. Yeah, and I know a few tricks. <clears throat> <clears throat> and you don't have a tail. So that's uh, that's a good thing. If you want to, you can have a completely blank face. I kind of can bluff quite well, depending on who's sitting on the table, to be honest. It's easier with men. It's easy to distract them. <laughs> <laughs> Dotty laughs. Isn't that the truth? It is, it is. Next time we're in the library looking for a book on card tricks and magical, like pocket tricks, easy, small things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. That would, be, that would be a fun thing. We could take it on our trip to Egypt. At that moment, the paper comes in. Mm -hmm. She gets up, she gets it, she hands it to you. Do you take a look? Uh, yes, as always. Looking mm -hmm. front page headlines. See what happened in the days that we were gone. You read the headlines. There is nothing really, you know, like this, that, and the other. You reach the announcements and engagements. Mm -hmm. And you see the following ad. 
We're happy to announce the engagement of our son, Matthew Gregory Esquire, and Lily Thompson of, uh, of Boston. Wait, Matthew? She, she will just stare at it, blinking. What is it? Says Dotty. I'll just point my finger. She actually literally takes the paper into her hands, physically lifting it to her face and reads out loud. Is that the same Matthew? Oh yes, that's his address. Who's Lily Thompson of Boston? I have no idea. But what about Pamela? They were engaged, right? The two of them have announced, the, uh, the, the parents have announced the engagement of their children, okay. yes. Okay. Alice will just go to the phone and will dial, first of all, Matthew's private number to see if he's home. Okay. <laughs> because he for sure would have a phone at home. He's, he's... Will you try and make a luck roll for me, please, with advantage? <laughs> Your luck sucks, but maybe. No. Far the Gregory away. residence. It's the butler. Uh, Baker here. Miss Baker. Uh, is Mr. Gregory around? I'm afraid Mr. Gregory is not in New York. Can I take a message? Is he still in Canada? Or is he still in Egypt? No, the young master returned three weeks ago with his fiancée. Could you please leave a message for Matthew that he should call me ASAP with a lot of, of exclamation marks? Of course, madam. And you hear, like, uh, you don't know if he makes as many exclamation marks mm -hmm. as you would like him to make, but he does take a message. And Thank you, you very scribble. much and have a very nice day, sir. Have a nice day. Not at all. Thank you. She will, and he hangs up. She will call the office. <laughs> oh, no, he, he he's not working there. Any more no he, he he he's freelancing now he's so freelancing now i would have contact data for pamela wouldn't i yes you do you I'll... have various pieces of contact information you have her place in new york you have a pad in montreal in montreal yes uh, i will call i will try to reach pamela on mm -hmm. whatever way i can i'll just start with her probably a phone number here in New York and then moving mm -hmm. onwards to mm -hmm. Canada. You ring the Baxter Strauss residence. Uh, it's the butler. Well, obvious. Uh, <laughs> Alice Baker here. Good day. Uh, Miss Baker. Uh, I would just be curious, is Pamela at home and would maybe have time for a short talk? I will see if the lady of the house will take your phone call. Thank you. And um, he puts down the receiver. He walks away. Um, a couple of minutes later, you hear steps. Mm -hmm. Definitely not the butler. Probably somebody in high heels. The receiver is picked up and the very normal, normally husky and um, dark voice of somebody who smokes too much and who enjoys a drink or two. Pamela Baxter Strauss picks up the phone. Alice. I am a bit struck about the news in the papers. What happened in Egypt? Do I need to kill him? I don't think that murdering him will make any difference, Alice. Well, what happened was his grandfather and a letter about the entailment. So essentially, get married or lose your inheritance. 
I need to kill him. Since when this is important for him? I believe that um, he just didn't feel he had the wherewithal to withstand society. You can't hold it against him. I, His parents. I for sure will hold it against him. Is he insane? I, I don't know. Just by any chance, Lily Thompson, would that name ring a bell? Because you don't no you don't really recall i i, I don't name. know whoever he thinks he wants to well i probably don't want to marry is he stupid to let someone well, like you go lily is a very charming girl 22 just stepped out into society i will definitely murder him for this alice i am very sorry for his behavior if I have to pick sides, you win. Clearly. <laughs> you, you don't have to pick sides. I would never ask you to. That was a horrible decision on his side. And the biggest mistake in his life that he ever did. I don't know about that. Because it means that um, he will inherit what would have rightfully been his but would have gone to his brother but we no money is not all and society status is not all but that's because you and i have money and i don't care about society and you have status and i don't care about it to be honest i know but he does he didn't realize in time he does With his job, he can earn enough money to have a good life. He doesn't need the money of his... I don't think it was about the money. I think it was about all he would give up. I mean, his grandfather basically said he was going to disown him. And then his father would have done the same thing. He would have been on his own. He has so he... many friends that are like family. I know. And but... the old man loves Matthew. I can't really imagine him pulling that through in the end. He made a decision and I respect that. I, I asked him to make a decision previously and he it took him a while, but he did. He decided in favor of me against his family, against society. And then he has decided to change his mind. We're all entitled. I mean, I got... <laughs> I was married twice. The second marriage was a complete disaster. It was like, you know, we were crazy. Well, love tends to do that. But still, it might be that in the papers you read the next announcement that he's not in a living space anymore because he was murdered barehanded by his best friend. Alice, I would prefer if you didn't. Well, I murdered him in two reasons. A, he's been back for three weeks and he was scared to even call me or say he's back. For that, I will definitely murder him. And for what he's done to you, he will get the next murder on top of that. Well, to be quite honest, considering that you're talking about murdering him, I do understand why he hasn't talked to you yet. He's afraid of you, my darling. He should be. But he knows he can't get rid of me like that. <laughs> Especially not when it's in the papers. Well, in fairness, he's not in New York City. I heard... He's in California. That much... Calif... <sighs> the bo the, his fiance is in Boston. The wedding will take place in three weeks. I'm not invited. Another oh, I'm pretty point sure you will be. To murder. I'm pretty sure Sending you will be. Sending out an invite three weeks before the wedding is socially <laughs> kind of a drama for a lot of people that will get an invite. Well, I'll have to, I'll give you one thing. You're a chip of the old block. Your mother would have said exactly the same thing. 
Oh, speaking of your mother, I hope that she gets invited, that she can basically see how he returns to the bosom of society. Without me, she's going to be so delighted. The only downside is that he won't marry you now. She will be angry that this comes shorthanded. And as you said, that it's not me, but someone from Boston. Why is he in LA or in California? It's too uh, early it's to be on related. honeymoon. It's work related. He's going to re relocate to California with his firm. He's rejoined. He's going to set up a subsidiary there. He has a lot to explain. Oh my God, I, <laughs> I really feel for him. Don't. He deserves every single bit of it. I'm sorry, I had to call you and he was not man enough to tell me himself. I hope we both still stay friends. You're always welcome here. I don't see why not. Good. Because you're kind of one of my favorite persons that I met in the last years. Well, um, I'm glad to hear it. Then I will sit down and make a murderous plan which includes a lot of torture and uh, she laughs don't as i said i'm really sorry that he made this decision don't be i am you per were kind of perfect together you were the right match for him you brought a good side out of him well if it had been the right match we would still be together. It wasn't. There were so many things that basically he couldn't. You know, it, it's fine. I understand. I don't. And I kind of don't want to accept that. Also going to California. What a nonsense is that? Well, I believe that he actually wants to distance himself from society, from New York society for a while, you know, make them forget about everything, you know, and then maybe return in a year or so with his maybe then child and wife. He could have gone with you to Canada and he could have just have restful, happy life with you, find a job there and everything would have been fine. And he would have been disowned by his family. Yeah, so be it. His brother will gamble the money away anyhow if he gets it. Well, it is what it is. We can't change that. I will not do anything. I... You can't do anything. Oh, believe me. As I said, he will suffer. Due to a lot of reasons. The list is getting longer and longer the longer I think about it. But as I said, uh, we need to go out for drinks in the next if you're still the question is on which number did i reach her on a new york number uh, on the new york number yeah it's the question are you still in new york for a while or do you plan to go back to canada mm, no <laughs> on the contrary no i'm here in i'm here for another four weeks or so but then i'm returning to europe i am um, i have decided to spend the summer at my ex-husband's win vineyard he will be there for the summer months with his wife and there are two children who I adore. You know, I'm the crazy aunt mm -hmm. that lives in the in the little chalet next to the big chalet. Um, and then when November comes around, I will actually go down back to um, to Cairo, and I'll spend the um, the digging season um, in in Egypt. We might it's going to be fantastic. Join you. I really there. We are thinking about making vacation over there. Well, I would like that. I mean, if you if you really go to Egypt and when I'm there, I would be happy to introduce you and to show you around a little and to ensure that you, you know, become a member of society. There are so many expats there during the digging season from Britain, from New York, from France. We just read so much about it and after we finished what we have to do here, I think 
some warmth, one a little bit of sunshine and change of scenery will be good for Dotty as well as me. So we, we kind of stumbled over Egypt after you guys went there and we actually found so out the, that we both are quite interested in the country. So the little the little um, the little guidebook I left you left a mark. It did. It did. My collection well, on Egypt grew quite a bit. I'm glad. Then. Well, I mean, the Continental is where I stay, and they have um, they also have suites, which would be perfect for the two of you. It would be, it would be. Well, first I need to finish a case here, so... Um, I hope probably... the case isn't killing Matthew Gregory. No, that is an additional case. Um, <laughs> I, I mean an actual private investigator case. Um, I'm not sure which evening I will be free but i will figure out and i will give you another call and then we set up a date to go out for drinks believe it or not at the moment i'm not ready to rejoin new york society i'm in most days i have plenty of stuff that i need to prepare and i've got books to read and of course you know shopping during the day and um also you know booking uh, booking the passage uh, to france and um yeah and doing shopping for the kids i mean the boys they really really they're into you know like those balsa wood uh, model planes mm -hmm. they've got them at sears i'm gonna get a whole collection for them you i know why you're the favorite aunt i totally can imagine that yeah i'm the one that lets them do whatever their parents don't let them do that's the way it should be that's the way it should be not the reason on the list for matthew to murder. anyhow have a <laughs> lovely rest of the day you too, Alice. And Thanks for the call. I will call in. Take care of you. Yeah, you too. And she rings off. Dottie has only heard half of the conversation and she's like, if I didn't know you, I would say you have tried, you've talked about killing him so often that I would feel fear for his life. But of course, I know you would never do any such thing. I am. Um, angry is not enough. You really are angry. How dare he? Next to making this insane decision, point taken, if he wants to do that and destroy his life, it's his life. But how dare he be back in New York for three weeks? How dare he make such a decision? Setting up, moving to California and not telling me I have to get it through the papers and talking to Pamela. He's afraid of you. We saved his life. Point A. B. He has been my best friend for such a long time. He's afraid of you. And more than that, he's afraid of losing your friendship. Well, he's surely working hardly on doing that i know i would have discussed the hell out of him if this is a good idea and told him off but in the end pamela's right it's his decision but not involving me and letting me learn that by paper i'm just waiting for the phone to ring and my mom is on the phone yelling at me because i did not tell her because she would think that I would have known. I should call well, her. Well, it's a good thing she's in Miami, isn't it? She may not be getting the New York papers oh, down there. Oh, believe me, she will. It's just time difference. So we can expect Mrs. Baker to ring within the next 48 hours. I will instruct Teresa not to answer the phone, but to leave it to me. I would rather say she would count like, although Florida is the same time zone, basically. Yeah, but I, I'm not even sure if she would be getting the local version of the New York Times with the local appointments. No, I don't think so. Yeah, so she, she might hear while she's still in Florida, but it would take a while. It would not be today. I would have contact data where they are in Florida, wouldn't of I? Of course you do. Alice will take a deep breath. She will look up the number and she will call her mom. 
um, the uh, a young Order female reception. voice answers. Um, uh, Florida Keys Resort. Uh, are speaking to Mary. Uh, Mary, good day. Um, um, Baker here. Um, I suppose my parents are guests in your residency. Mr. and Mrs. Richard Baker, yes, uh, indeed. Do you know if they're still in or are they already exploring? Um, no, I believe they are by the pool. Would you like me to uh, call them to the phone? Uh, or would you like me to take a message? Alice is trying to think what is tactically bad. I think if you could get my mother that would be helpful of course madam thank you very much if you will hold the line i will thank you she puts down the receiver i will just wait to put a dotty can you make me a drink please just a small one it's 11 o'clock in the morning i don't care she she rise, she raises both eyebrows and gives you that it gives you the look Alice will just shake the head. She she she's tempted to leave the phone, and but she knows that definitely. You can. I will make you some tea. No. Thank coffee. you. Also, no coffee. Thank you. I will just hold on it. to the dear life <laughs> phone line. <laughs> And it, it does take a while, but then you hear um, footsteps. Um, you, you recognize your mother's gate. You would recognize it everywhere. Um, she comes to the phone. She says, Baker. Uh, Baker as well. Hi. Uh, hello, mother. I, I'm, I, I was surprised because Mary told me it was you. But then again, why would you call me at 11 o'clock in the morning? Alice, is anything wrong? Well... With me, everything is fine. Um, oh, good, good. Uh, you had me worried there, dear. I just got some disturbing news through the newspaper, and I thought you might want to hear it from me before you hear it from someone else, and then you will be mad at me because I did not tell you. I'm not sure if... I'm sorry, I know you're on vacation. Alice, what, what what's the matter? What 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 about the newspaper? What could possibly be in the newspaper that I would rather hear from you that doesn't pertain to you? But you seem fine, unless you're calling me from a police cell. No, no, no. I'm 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 safe and sound home. Uh, just came back from a weekend at the sea. Um, oh, good, good. Um, well, Matthew. Yes. What about Mr. Gregory? Well, well good, the good news probably in your side, he's no longer together with Pamela. Oh, thank God. The two of them were never a match. I mean, you can say lots about Miss Baxter Strauss, and yes, I know she had a terrible childhood being orphaned at such a young age, but to be quite honest, she's not fit for good society. So that's good news. So basically, but why would that be in the paper? Because he is engaged to a young lady from Boston and they will marry in three weeks and they will move to Los or, or to California. What? Yeah. Come again? Yeah, yeah, that was my reaction in the paper. In three weeks? Um I we will not even be in New York. So if this is if this is your way of in no, no, of, no, this no. is his way of inviting me via you, no, I have I, to tell you I'm I have no invitation. I only have what is written in the paper. And what I, do you mean you have no invitation? He has not spoken to me in weeks. I didn't even know he's back in the US. He was in Egypt. That was my last information. So you're telling me that you know that he's getting married in three weeks because you read it in the paper. In today's announcements, his parents, bless their hearts that at least they kind of keep up. I'm quite sure they are shocked as well. Although, no, they pressured him into it. But what? Um, I've been pressuring you into marrying him for years. It's not worked. Well, his grandfather told him that if he's not marrying a good girl, he will lose everything. That kind of pushed him 
Oh, Maybe yes. I should talk to your father about your trust fund, if this is so easy. You know me, that's not... Yes, unfortunately I do. Um, he, he's marrying a young lady just of age 22. Honestly, she's a bit young for him. Um, her name is Lily Thompson. She must be Lily a Thompson. higher society in Boston. I'm not sure if you know the Thompson family there. I don't think I've ever heard of her. I will have to look at my book. Not off the top of my head. Just maybe. I mean, Thompson is not an uncommon name. It is not. Um, just uh, Alice will give her the date uh, that is in the paper. I will not be able to make it, nor will your father. We will still be in Miami. Well, I will not be there either, so tough on them, but at least that I just wanted, no, not that you read it in the paper, because as I said, I just read it in the paper myself. What's ever happened to decorum? In the past, such an engagement would have been announced through personal letters, and then the, the wedding wouldn't have been for another for six months to get everything ready I and know. prepared. I know. I... I'm telling you now, the moment you get engaged, we will be sending out invitations for a wedding six months later, just so you know. Well, I... There is no such thing as, like, you know, a gunshot wedding like this. I can give you... In my house. ...the promise, if I ever marry. Please hold on to your seat. I'm not saying I will never marry, but if I marry... Yes, we will at least need six months to plan everything and see who should be invited, who not. And Do you have someone in mind? No. Oh. The best candidate oh just got snatched up by someone else. I always knew there was something between you and Matthew. Well... Let's point it to was, because I'm honestly not sure how much is left after this. Alice, you're speaking in riddles. Whatever do you mean? Well, if your best friend's best friend betrays you like this, it's the question how much friendship is really there. But nevertheless, I just wanted you to know, because I know that from time to time you get the New York Times and that you get the news and just that you're informed. I'm well, sorry. Well, I highly appreciate it. Thank you. I, I, I hope you enjoy Florida. Oh, yes, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, I can tell you, your father just adores, adores this resort. I think we'll come back. Make sure you're not getting sunburned. Oh, yes. Um, it's too late for him. Um, uh, we're using a lot of aloe, and and he's staying in the shade now. I did I did warn him. I said, Richard, you're not used to the sun like this. But will he ever listen? He's a lot like you. You never listen either. In this case, I would have been smart enough to listen because I know how evil the sun can be. Make sure he's not buying too many Cuban cigars because I'm quite sure he's already stacking up and then isn't he? Maybe you could write him a letter to the effect, because my words fall on deaf ears, darling. He's just as incorrigible as you are. Tell him that I will at least want half of his stack. I will. Then, again, sorry for disturbing you. And oh, you didn't. I love talking to you. You know this, darling. Then, greetings to father, and enjoy the time and uh, don't get burned up and we see each other when you're back. Yes, we will We will let you know when we arrive. Thank you. Uh, and then Alice will hang up. She will walk towards her drinks and she will pour herself a whiskey straight, no ice, nothing. And we'll just... <laughs> On, only li like really a sip it's not like she wants to get really drunk but it's just for her nerves she just dotty is standing there with her arms crossed in front of her chest i am out of words and slowly i'm getting calmer which is not better for matthew because now it's getting really dangerous for him but well should we focus on our case? Because... Do let's. 
I don't have to worry about going to a wedding, so everything is fine. She steps closer to you and she says, but when you get the invitation, you will go, won't you? No. Let's no. I honestly highly doubt that Matthew has anything to say that would make me go to that wedding. I'm honestly not even say. sure if I will ever talk to him again. Well, once to murder him and that's it. She looks very sad. I thought he was man enough to handle his life. He's obviously not. And obviously our friendship is nothing worth to him. He made his decision, he has to live with it. He's losing yep. a lot of people that are worth millions more than the stupid money he's getting from his family. I mean... I'm not sure if he's aware that he's losing you. He should be smart enough. You can be very hard. As I said, if he at least would have called me like two and a half weeks ago with, he's really sorry, he's back, things happened, we need to talk. I would still have murdered him a little bit. She smiles. But learning this via paper. No. There's a saying. Let, let, let me just one thing. I will call again Matthew's house. It's the butler. Uh, Baker again. So, sorry to disturb you again. You can just. Miss Baker. Uh, change the note. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, just. Tell him I called and he should never call me again. Very well, madam. Thank you and have a lovely day, sir. Have a good day. And he rings off. Good. Alice will go back, take a second drink. Then we'll bring and the glass into the kitchen to clean it up and put it back where it belongs. Job. Well, we'll have to see what Louis tells us on the Morrisons. You know, Dotty. For Dotty, this isn't finished. She's not accepting this. But she's also not pushing the point at the moment. Uh, at the moment, there's nothing to be really done. Now it's uh, oh, she on could a talk. certain... And if she wants to, she can talk your ear off. She can, but Alice is... Even I have no idea what happens if Matthew would call or show up. I have no idea what will happen. Murder is a big option. Strangling someone doesn't make a big mess. Might be a good option. <laughs> Dottie looks at you and she says, You know that there is a saying that says, Every story that you tell, I can tell better. Because I've also got my story to tell. He hasn't told you his story. Well, he's not man enough to tell me his story. Maybe wait. He is afraid. Well, that I would be too. Ship sailed, darling. He made it as worse as it could be. So, his bad, his decision. He has to live with the consequences. There will be a lot of his friends who will be kind of disturbed by this. I'm not the only one for sure. That's a good idea. Just, she's going back to the phone. <laughs> <laughs> the poor Dottie. She will give the M Martha a call. Martha who resides in Florida most of the time. Yes, you ring Martha. She's there. Alice here. 
Oh, Alice, how are you doing? Um, your parents are delightful. I am glad to hear. I just talked to my mother. She's loving it down there. She will for sure return for vacation to She Florida. is the center of every reception she goes to. She really knows how to socialize with the southern ladies. I am very impressed. The only thing I learned, my father seems to look like lobster now because she totally underestimated the sun down there, but well. <laughs> he does look funny, um, like like a very pink walrus with his moustache, you know. Yeah. I should maybe be making fun of your progenitor, but... <laughs> Honestly, it he, he de- it's his own fault. He deserves that. It is his own fault. I was telling him, you know, that's why we have parasols, even the men. But would he listen? No, he's a lot like you. Well, in this case, I would have listened because I know better. I've already gone through that. I know, son, it's not fun if it's too much shadow time especially for us pale city dwellers it's quite a bit um i was just curious did you hear anything from matthew in the last like three four weeks no but i was also not expecting to hear from him he's in egypt no he's not i mean what do you mean he's not in egypt he what but there's some interesting news in the papers to Day, and I was curious if you would have known. You you don't. That's so. I'm not the only one. There is news about Matthew in the paper. Is he okay? Well, he's engaged, and he will marry in three weeks. And no, not Pamela. He's engaged, and he'll get married in three weeks, and not to Pamela. Who? What? He's marrying a young lady from Boston, 22 years old. Can you believe it? Barely old enough to marry. Uh, I, I think no is not a strong enough word to describe how I cannot believe this. Um, yeah, my thought as well. I, how? I mean, I, what? I, I don't know. I talked to Pamela. She explained a few things, although it's sad enough that she has to explain them to me. She's back Did in New York. Did the two of them quarrel? Well, rather, his family pointed the gun at him and told him, marry that young girl or you lose everything. And he... It's the grandfather, isn't it? It is. He was always strange and he gave in. Yeah, that's making me... I'm not even sure on what level angry I am. I was just curious if I was the only one he forgot to inform about this little thing. Well, I'm not surprised that he wouldn't tell me. I mean, it's not like we were extremely close. I mean, he's he's very close to you. I'm, I'm surprised that he doesn't tell you. But then again, but you've we been hang quite around uh, here mercurial. There. Yeah, but we hang around here and there. I yes, we do. At least. No, I, I mean, I've, I've been in Florida for the last two months. Okay. So, um, hmm. I mean, he has my number down here, but... I mean, I suppose with the engagement and everything, he was maybe too busy to ring me. But that means you also got no invite. Uh, not to my address down here. And I, I mean, I spoke to the maid only two days ago and she didn't mention any posts. No, I don't think we got anything. Uh, well, also, it would be a bit difficult for me to make it up there in three weeks. I wasn't, I wasn't planning on going back for another two months. Well. I don't think any one of our, of his circle of friends will be there because most of us will have different plans. That's going to be a lonely wedding. Well, he... But how's Pamela? Just so... She's handling it surprisingly well. She understands his decision. I don't. Well, she's had maybe more time to get used to it than you have, if you just learned of it today. Well, I know the old man is hard to deal with, but he adores Mm -hmm. Matthew. He always has. Well, Matthew's brother would not be the best heir, we both know that. Well, I mean, have you tried speaking to Matthew. He's in California setting up his new life. In California? Whatever for? Don't ask me. I know he's not here. He will be back for the wedding. I see. This is... Well, at least you know now because I'm quite sure in a few days 
it will be talk maybe thanks to my mother it will be talk this evening because she knows as well oh your mother how did she find out that's why i talked to her this just you told how did she take it because she was always of the opinion that you and i were you and him were going to get married well i started I mean, with, that's off the table now i started with the good news that pamela is off the table which she kind of enjoys as it's not very surprising and then i told her the rest and she is baffled might be a good word well it is a very very big surprise and she, i mean this... she stated clearly that the wedding even if she will get an invitation which i'm quite sure if she does not <clears throat> there will be a family feud coming up uh, but she will not make it because she did not plan to return similar as you in the next three weeks so uh, well i mean it's not like she lives next door to to new york now i mean she it, it's going to take a while for her to close down the i mean they rented a suite they essentially they would have to close it down like and you would an apartment and then you need to organize a dress and that no, no way she she will not but uh, well no because your mother would not wear a dress to a wedding that she's worn anywhere before i know her yeah that would be and then you need the perfect gift which takes time as well and i am curious how the gregory family wants to handle that because they are making a lot of families quite angry maybe the, the wedding will be more done by the boston side why three weeks why are you not taking the official time that it should be like five six seven months if he got it well i could think of some reasons he just came back from egypt she can't be pregnant by now that would be too quick to know do you know when they met and where? I did not ask if she met, he met her in each. He... Well, now you know. And when you're back in New York, we would definitely need to go out for drinks. Of course, of course. But like I said, I mean, it's going to be another two months. I was actually write, going to write your letter at the weekend, um, you know, to tell you about, you know, to tell you my news, not there, that there is much. But with your parents here, um, you know, socializing is taken to a whole new level. Then I hope my mother is not getting too much work to handle. Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. She is delightful. Then enjoy the time down there and please write me a letter you know I always enjoyed it might be when you're back that we are off because we are planning to go on a trip to Egypt just to get a bit away well but then I do expect letters and postcards from Egypt I I will also uh, inform you up front when we leave maybe we at least have a few days that we can see each other I think I think we will I think we will perfect perfect and take care stay safe you too darling and uh yeah have a lovely sunny rest of the day oh yes sun is never far away here she will and hang she... up and she will call the it's coal fields if I can read mm -hmm. my handwriting yeah. right the coal fields <coughs> At us 37, you're unlucky, they're not in. Uh, you reach the maid. She will leave a message if mm -hmm. either one of them could call me when they have time. That of course, madam, I will, I will let them know. Thank you very um, much. But um, I, I think it will probably not be today because they're going to, uh, they're out all day and then they're going to go to a dinner and then they're going to catch a show. Oh, then. So it will be late, but would be tomorrow a suitable day? Tomorrow or just in the next days, whenever it fits for them. It's not that so it urgent. So it is not that no, urgent. No, no, it's yes, not of that course. urgent. I just but I will make sure that they get the message tonight. Perfect. Thank you very much. Have a nice rest of the day. Have a nice day, madam. So, I did all my phone calls. No one knows about it. <laughs> Dottie has been sitting there, kind of like listening to your part of the conversation. Eyeing you, eyeing the drinks cabinet. I will not drink. We will now focus on work and Alice will go in the kitchen and make herself. Co Do you want a coffee as well? Yes, I will make I will have a coffee while I'm making lunch. Then Alice will make 
And I would like you to stay away from the drinks cupboard and I would like you to stay away from that from the telephone. Just try and relax. Please. <laughs> Alice will, will focus on the coffee and ignore what she just heard. <laughs> Dottie will get um, a nice cup of coffee and Alice will just plonk herself on the at the kitchen table uh, with the coffee in her hand. And we'll just stare probably in the coffee. At an 87, Teresa is not um, deep in your thoughts enough already to be able to fathom what's wrong. She's just basically going about doing the laundry. Mm -hmm. You have lunch um, and then three o'clock rolls around. Ding dong. Teresa takes a deep breath, straightens her apron and her uniform, goes to the door. She um, she reaches for the doorknob, pulls back her hand, does it again, opens the door and Louis steps in because she basically just says hello and then flattens herself against the wall and points towards the salon. I will peek out my head out of the salon. Louis, nice that you made it. Uh, he he comes to you and in his very elegant, uh, very, you know, very elegant and, you know, very um, lithe way. He bends down, he kisses your hand and he says, Miss Baker. I will just shake his hand back. Where is the delightful Miss Williams? I'm quite sure Dottie would be in the salon as yeah. well. So c can we enjoy it with a bit of coffee or tea? Oh, yes, I will have a coffee. Thank you. And I'm quite sure we would have both ready because we are prepared for guests. Yeah, and you do know that he likes coffee. And um, basically, uh, Teresa runs to the kitchen quite quickly. She comes back with the coffee, puts it down, and pours Probably the coffee, runs some out biscuits again. on a tea on, on yes, a, on, of on, a, on a and they're not from a tin. And he says, "Well, um, I hope you had a lovely time at the seaside. We did. Thank you." Uh, New York was very was getting very hot over the weekend. Well, I um, I have done as you asked. Um, I didn't go myself because I did tell you that um, I would stick out like a sore, sore thumb. But I did ask a couple of friends of mine, you know, from you know that side of mm -hmm. the Bronx. Now, interestingly enough, he and she have changed their behaviors since October. Usually they would go out a couple of times a week to the local shop. You were not wrong. It's the corner shop that you had uh, described to me where they would do the shopping. But since October, nobody has seen her and he has hardly left the house. Okay. That is a changing behavior. I've also asked around. It's not like she died and got buried and nobody, you know, like it was a small burial. Nobody knows. Um, they have been asking about him and he says that she's a little bit under the weather. <clears throat> and that's all I could learn. But the address is still correct. People have, have seen him come in and go out of that house. Well, at least it confirms that something is off. And that our idea on there is something going on is not wrong. And there's also the question of the price. I had to pay $1.50. Uh, Alice will just get up. She will walk towards um, the... I'm not even sure how do you call it in uh, English. Like the little table that you have basically at the entrance where you put your keys and things like that. I don't know, but I think this is this is where you would put your purse. Yeah, and that like there a, would... a small hall. I, I actually imagine it's one of those um, like, you know, like art deco type with yeah. a very, very thin and kind of like and I think small it would have a legs. drawer, a small one, yeah. and I think there yeah. would be some cash and change mm -hmm. uh, in there. Mm -hmm. So she would get go there and she would, I think she would be crazy enough. She, she would pull out $5 and she would just give it to him for 
the work for you organizing things and whoever gave you the information you can tip as well because it Thank was you. really really th helpful. Thank you so much. Well, I wasn't sure if it was going to be helpful because it was a lot less than I was expecting. But um, I mean, they they were never really outgoing. Yeah, um, you know, they, they 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 kept themselves to themselves. She did the sewing and you know some cleaning, and he basically was a bricklayer and did odd jobs in his 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 uh, old age. Um, but you know, it's um, people have noticed, but people have also told me, well, or my informants really. That these are not the type of people who would ask a lot of questions of. Yeah, they are not very social. We knew that already. October. That's interesting. But very good to know. Thank you so much, Louis. That was really helpful. And you can count on me calling you for at least help if we need to get around in the Bronx. Thank you. I look forward to that. And he gets up, he um, kisses your hand, he um, waves to Dotty. I will um, bring Teresa. him to the door. Yeah. I will just blankly ignore that Teresa is there. I will just... Yeah, Teresa is standing in the hallway ready to, to show him out, mm -hmm. but you beat her to it and you show him out. And um, he's he just gets into his taxi and drives off. Okay. Uh, with that, could we? And here we are back. Yes. Um, you have now learned um, that uh, the Morrisons have had a huge change in behavior. So uh, what are you? I mean, one thing uh, that we have to remember is you're approaching the new moon and you know that um, uh, Droit de Lens, mm -hmm. the spear finger, always operates or her power is at its height during the new moon. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's when she is most powerful, but that's also when she is most likely to strike. What are you going to do? I think Alice would kick herself that Louis did not take them with them because she kind of wants to go to the Bronx now and is like... Bring it on. Punching herself for it. Um... Dottie dear, what? October. The only thing in October that I know about that might be having an impact is Halloween. But I don't think that has something to do with that. But I'm, I'm not even sure if they were celebrating Halloween. I have no idea if they do. And also, why would that stop them from leaving the house? Um... Well, the question is, when did it... Well, they were never guests of Mamma. No, that was that was the deciding factor. They were the only couple in their 60s that didn't. The frequent. question is, what changed? Make an idea roll. That is better than a book. Let's see. Oh, 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 that is a two. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, she, she, now, she, that, that, she is, has that is a like... critical. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so the thing is, um, you have experienced two things in the recent past where something changed dramatically from day to day, from one minute to the next. That is not really helpful. <laughs> okay. What Shall happened I vague from it up the day you? to the next? People get sick. That's the only thing that I... So so I, I kind of am on the track that the old lady, because she's mm -hmm. under the weather, is really sick. And that's why they are now triggering to find new hostesses. That would be my kind of guess. And that's a very good guess. Says that voice in your head that you don't know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Alice will share with, with Dottie what she's mulling about. So 
I, I think the old lady is sick. That's why she's not out. And that's why they are now trying to move on to healthy new bodies. Well, I mean, it's it's a very good reason. I'm I, I'm not condoning their behavior. No, but it's, it's a very it's, good it's reason. It's a logical kind of. It's it's, it's, a, it's on, a very logical from, trigger from their point of view. Saying. It's a logical thing. The question is, how do we stop them? Well, I mean, the thing is that we still don't know how sh how they control this thing, um, and. Maman Lavoux said that she is very dangerous and she's very powerful, but it didn't seem like Maman Lavoux had like. Did she offer you any charms or anything to, to bind that thing? I also didn't ask for it. Well, maybe we should. Why did we let Louis drive off? He could have just taken us with him. Well, what you can do is you can ring Le Chanois where he hangs out and ask him to come straight back. That would be mean, driving back and forth and back and forth. If you really want to drive with him, otherwise we will just take a different cab. Or we wait till tomorrow and you leave a message for him at the Chat Noir that he should, take us, he should pick us up tomorrow. This would also give you time to ring Maman Lavaux and telling her that you're going to be in and asking and telling her up front what you would like to know. Mm. So in case she needs to prepare stuff. Does the shop even have a phone? Do we have a phone number? We never rang them before. We always just showed up. You can always ask the operator. Well, let's see if they are, if they even have a phone. Let's see. She, she will pick up the phone and call operator. Operator. Um. Becky, I would be curious if you could connect me to... Oh god, how's the store called? It has been too long. <laughs> Her store had a name, didn't it? Le Tige Jésus. Ah. Uh, she would ask if there is a number to reach that store. Of course there is. Oh. Shall I put you through? Yes, thank you. Kindly. And, she, you hear the... and could could you give me the before she gets through? Could you give me the the dial through number that I have? She gives you the dial through yeah. number, and then she goes, and it's connected. Mm -hmm. And you hear the ringtone, and then you hear Maxine's voice. Hello. Uh, uh, actually, she goes, "Hello, uh, Alice Baker here. Uh, so, sorry for disturbing you on the phone now, uh, Miss Baker." Um, is Maman Laval available for quick talk? Um, yes, she she has a customer in about ten minutes, but I'm I can. I it can it see will be quick, can, five minute max. If she can talk to you, thank you. Uh, will you hold hold yes, the line? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And she puts down the receiver. She comes. She goes away. She comes back. Um, and she says, uh, yes, she's she's ready to talk to you. I will I will take the phone thank to you, her. Thank you. And she picks up. You know, she, you assume that she carries the thing around. Mm -hmm. It's like on a long string. Um, and you hear the very um, brittle voice of a very dark, a, a very old um, African American woman saying, "Hello, Alice." Uh, good afternoon. Just looking at the time. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Um, thank you for just taking one two minutes. I didn't just want to show up again. Just asking you. Oh, you're always welcome. We found a few things out, but I'm still unsure if you know anything that would help against our, let's call them invaders, that we don't want to have in the Bronx. Oh, and the question is, well, if we, if it makes sense that we swing by maybe during tomorrow, whenever it fits for you, that we could have a talk, peace and quiet. Uh, well, I have done some research, um, and I believe that what you're looking for is the Uktina. The Uktina is a an artifact. I don't really know what it is. It's been described as a stone. Some describe it as an egg. It's not that big, maybe a little bigger than your fist. Mm -hmm. And it's used to uh, to call her forth. In order to call her forth, what you do is you uh, soak that artifact in your own blood and you keep it soaked 
in blood. So you have to donate a pint of your blood every other week or so to keep it wet. Hmm. Take the stone and ensure that it doesn't... It dries out and she will be gone. Hmm. Take the stone and destroy it. She will be gone. But mind you, she will fend for that stone. I believe so. That is extremely helpful already. Thank you. Then, then I will think a little bit about that. Then I will not keep you from your customer. That... Thank you. It's a christening. Yeah. Well, I suppose you would not call it that. Uh, the christening was earlier at the church, so this is now the real christening. Every help we can get is a good help. Uh, then <laughs> she laughs throatily. Have a nice rest of the afternoon and evening. Thank you so much for finding this out. You're welcome, child. And she hangs up? Yeah, I will hang up. I will wave Dottie over, although I'm quite sure Dottie would be like... Yeah, Dottie has been listening. Although she does so quite discreetly. Well, we, we know how to stop them, kind of. They're using an artifact to hold the connection. It's, it's like a egg-shaped stone, also egg-sized stone, that you need to keep in blood all the time. So fresh blood, like every other day or so, just to keep it coated in blood. As soon as you let it dry out, the connection is gone. If you destroy so if we, it anyhow as well. So if we if we steal that stone, the whole thing ends. It should. I just have no idea how to get the stone because they are at home. And they will fight for it with everything they have. They will not have it laying around on the windowsill for someone from outside to pick it. And they are Probably not leaving not. the house. Especially she is not leaving the house. So what do you suggest? Tomorrow we drive to their place. I want to investigate how it looks outside just to see if there is a way. All right. Will you ring for Louis? I mean, the good thing, if he, if he were to drive us, he could drop us off at a place where it's kind of like I mean, you and I will stick out anyway, but maybe not have him drop us off right in front of the doorstep. Or he could be, he maybe knows the back alleys. He could tell us how we can get to the back of the house. It's worth a try. So uh, I think by now he should also be back. So she will mm -hmm. call the Chat Noir and ask if mm -hmm. Louis is there. Louis is there. Oh, Miss Baker. Well, uh, that... It did that take was long. quicker than I thought. <laughs> no, it didn't. We, we got some information, and I would be curious if you could uh, pick us up tomorrow, whenever it fits you. To be honest, and when do you need picking up? Um, around. I I don't know how how early do you start? I don't want to kick you out of bed too early. You're my customer. Then uh, would be ten, ten o'clock suitable. For oh, you? that's not early. Good. Then ten o'clock would be good, and we would well not too surprisingly would like to investigate the the place where the Morrisons live. Not not inside, course, obviously no outside. Just how it's located to see mm -hmm. a bit more. Yes, of course, no problem. I will pick you up at 10 at your house, I assume. Yes, thank you very kindly. Then mm -hmm. have a nice evening, successful you too. drives, and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. And he rings off. Okay. Okay, so we've got a plan. 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. Um, Alice will sit down with a piece of paper and she will 
start scribbling and drawing what she remembers from what we've seen a little bit just to get an idea because she's really planning like how can we get in like waiting mm -hmm. for him to not be at home then ringing distracting mm -hmm. her someone else gets in from the back she, she's like going through all mm -hmm. of these mm -hmm. kind of scenarios okay so what you do remember from the time that you were there is that the building is partly derelict there are there are some windows that have been broken um so not the whole building is being lived in mm -hmm. um You've only seen the front, you've never been to the back, so yeah. it could be that, you know, maybe even at the back there's a building site or maybe something has broken down there as well. Um, the, the neighborhood is poorer than poor. There are people there lying there, drunk, in the street, people begging. And then there's the corner shop, which is like maybe, you know, like, I don't know, five doors down or something. Mm -hmm. So within walking distance. Um, where people are also kind of like hanging out, there are people standing there with, you know, those um, the bottles in the in the brown bags and that kind of thing mm -hmm. so that's what you're seeing there um generally speaking being white there is completely like you know being alien yeah um but there's also not when you were there there wasn't that much going on there weren't that many people there and you were there during the day so it's more like you know quiet and those drunks probably wouldn't remember you even if you stepped on them by accident. They are completely passed out. Well, Dotty, tomorrow we should see that we wear clothing that is kind of discreet. And I know it's... I need to check my wardrobe. And Alice will just stop off upstairs to go through her closet just to see. I'm quite sure she has a few things that are more toned down in color. Yes, of course, you have all the colors of the, well, not rainbow in that case, but yes, you do. And something that is not too fancy looking. So, she, she, so maybe she, not trousers? Probably not trousers. Uh, just a longer skirt in, in like a brownish, grayish pattern or no pattern best. And, and just she will look through to get something yeah. together that's looking a little bit like not yelling like, hey, I'm here next to her being... Uh, white, but uh, at least cloth-wise. Also not to look too fancy and rich. Yeah, no, that's something that, that you can pull off. Um, Maeve joins you. She looks at you as you are putting, as you're holding up the clothes. And, oh, look um, at the cat. What do you think? Uh, she gives it an approving, uh, she gives it an appraising look and then she nods her approval. Then she will get some scratches between the ears for that she enjoys that and uh, then I will hang it out for me then easy to grab and I will go back downstairs mm -hmm. where Dottie is um, looking at um, nothing in particular she's looking completely innocent <laughs> found clothing I'm not surprised. I know your wardrobe quite well. I forgot about quite a few things I have in there. I'm always surprised what I find. Maeve approved of the look. Well, in that case, if it's Maeve approved, what could possibly go wrong? How to steal a stone. How to get in. Well, I mean, you can unlock doors. Yeah, but I kind of do that well when no one is home. Well, I mean, the door is no different whether somebody's home or not. Yeah, but you hear when someone opens the door and unlocks it. Well, then you have to be really fast. Won't you? I'm honestly kind of tempted if setting a fire might be a good idea. Alice. I know there are other people. Not only that, I mean, what's wrong with you? I just try to figure out ideas on how we can get them out. Yes, but the... killing someone isn't even if they are a I don't want to kill them. I just want to set the fire so there's a fire alarm and the fire brigade is coming and they're evacuating everyone. Well, then you can always raise a false alarm. I could. 
Maybe there's also like a trash can in the back where we can safely lit fire that at least there's some smoke. That might I like be an that option. Idea. Although I'm quite sure the firemen will first look for fire before they are evacuating a house. Well, we just have to get every. We just have to convince everyone to leave ourselves. The other thing is, I'm quite sure they will take the stone with them if they have to leave. Though it needs to be covered in blood, you can't carry that around. We only have one try, so it's a maybe option. Uh huh. Also thinking if we could find any reason for the police to raid the place. But I can't think Well, of any. you did speak to Sergeant Updike and he told you that they were upstanding citizens that never had any brush that's, in with the law. That's the point. And I can't ask him to just raid a house where there's no reason to. He won't. No, even though if I tell him it's them. Still, even if he believes us, he will have mighty problems explaining that to his superiors. And also, what will they find? A piece of stone that is covered in the owner's blood. That's not a crime. No, but it would be exactly what we need. <sighs> Telling them they are selling drugs? I'm just getting creative at the moment. As I said, it's not final. Dottie is letting you get creative. She sits there, she she takes notes as you speak. Well, it's maybe worth asking. Although if then there is a fire, he will know. Although what do you, hmm. what do you mean ask ask who what? The sergeant. If he can think of a way why he would be able to get in an apartment like that. Maybe with a female assistant in training? I know. I'm I'm out of <laughs> I'm out of ideas. That's the main problem. How do you get into a house like that when they are not leaving? It would be so easy if they would be leaving the house regularly. Well, I mean he leaves the house. But not very regularly either. And we are running out of time. Maybe we just need to go in while they're in there and talk to them. I don't think they will listen. They already killed so many people. And if she's really sick, and I suspect she's really seriously sick, they will fight for her, and I can't even blame them on that. I would have done, honestly, everything to keep you alive. I'm not sure I would go that far, to be honest, but... Well, I'm glad that you would shy away from murder, because... No, I know that's not the right way, but they are stuck in this loop for a while now. They don't for know. a hundred years. And it must be scary to decide to stop because then it ends and they know it doesn't have to end if we talk to them we will not have a chance to steal as I said I think it's a one shot whichever thing we do we have one try but talking to them is also a valid option. Although I highly doubt you can appeal to their sense that murdering other people just to live longer is not the right way to go. Because they they killed innocents already and they didn't care. Yeah. They killed all those children in the orphanage. Yeah. Because when I think about the initial thing I've seen, I, I honestly, those men, 
were not good people. But murdering children in an orphanage is... You can't get worse than that. No. So they don't really care about other human beings. They just care about themselves. Which must be very lonely, to be honest. Well, from all we've heard, they are lonely. They are not part of this community. They can't have a happy life. I still think that they have kind of like, on the way, been really broken. Mm. Maybe it's it's what it's like you say. This is this is kind of like almost like an addiction. They can't let go. They need to go on. Just Nate can call any ghost. She can't, right? What do you mean, any ghost? Any like. And anyone, in terms who, of... anyone who died, probably not, because they are at rest in peace, hopefully. What's your luck? 17. Oh, I rolled an 18. <laughs> not a pity. You don't know. Another idea, also maybe worth asking Mama Lavon, she can do quite a few things as well. Who would you ask? Who would you want her to 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 con to, to to call? The time where I've seen them, where all began, they were children. Yes. No, no, no. They were grown ups. They moved into the body of children. They moved into. The, oh, oh, right. They moved yeah. into the body of children. I yeah, forgot. And... Ignore, ignore my idea. Mm -hmm. No, I'm uh, fair enough. Although. Recalling one of the evil guys, there was one sticking out of it. Francois. To show them that we get why they did what they did, but killing innocent children. The question is, they kind of believe in something and they must know that what they are doing is deeply wrong and will bring them to hell. All the more reason not to die. But the longer they go on, the more people they murder, the worse it gets. Well, if you can live forever. No one lives forever. They're, they're having a very good shot at it already. Again. They've been around since 1780. It must something. It must be tiring that you can't it connect is. to anyone because you will lose them anyhow. Maybe. But this is exactly what I mean. Maybe you need to talk to them. This is what you're saying. I don't think they care. As I this... said, they murdered children. I think they are past any kind of logical thinking and feeling bad. But then the only way to deal with this situation is to actually sit there and, you know, uh, is, is actually to go there and rest it from them with violence. Guns blazing. Guns blazing. And you do have a gun. I do, and I know how to use it well. Mm -hmm. Just don't let anyone else snatch it and shoot you with it. The thing is, they will fight back. And I honestly don't want to shoot them. I just want to take the stone. Then they can grow old or not so old. Because honestly, they are quite old already. And just maybe find peace for once in their life. So, what do you suggest? As we said, tomorrow we will see how it looks. Maybe the back alley, if there's a way to sneak in. Because that mm -hmm. would be, to be honest, my preferred way. And to steal it underhanded. Yeah. Because when we go in there guns blazing, they will call for police and help and whatever. And we will have quickly other people at hand that will help them. Because I am a white lady entering their house with a gun. Breaking and entering. Yes. You are a felon, Alice Baker. You are a felon in the making. I think the ship already kind of passed in a few incidents, but well. It 
to be honest, I killed before, not on purpose. Well, tomorrow we investigate, like proper pre PIs do. I'm looking forward to this. And then we will make a plan. Maybe uh -huh. we should stop on the way back at Maman Laval. Be curious if she has anything that might make someone like sleepy or drowsy. She offered you a sleeping draft. The thing is, it would be interesting if she has anything that you don't have to drink. Maybe just inhale. And how do you make sure that you don't inhale it when you go in? <sighs> a gas mask. Might be interesting to around. guess. They would have been around by then. Yeah, because the First police, World War yeah, and police and so and, on, they would you know, have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, not police, yeah. uh, fire, firemen would have it, especially against the smoke. Yeah. Well, it's worth a try. It is. After that, can we please take a case of a missing cat that we just find and give back? At that, uh, Maeve <laughs> jumps on top of your lap. She puts her front paws on your shoulders and she looks at you. And you would be the one helping us to find your fellow cat, I'm quite sure. And I will just pat her. She meows. Alice is still skeptical if this is really a cat or someone that possesses a cat, but she will just go with it. May I, may I remind you that this cat was something that you brought in. You bought her for Dotty. It's but all Alice, you're doing. Alice is so beyond with every freaking thing that is happening. The cat is behaving sometimes it's quite like a cat actually. too much. <laughs> like it's like is that deity thing inside of you? But she will not because she surely doesn't want to scare Dotty. So that is something she's not sharing. Dotty looks at the two of you and she says, "Well, you the two of you were made for each other." No. You two belong together. Maeve, dear, Dottie is your mom. Remember, yes? I'm just the aunt that feeds you well. Maeve looks at the aunt that feeds her well, and she looks at Dottie, who is kind of like, you know, she does feed her, but not, you know, she doesn't give her treats like you do. And she nuzzles you and curls up in your lap and shows Dottie what's what. <laughs> Alice will just pick her up and put her on Dottie's lamp. Okay. Oh, she look, she gives you she gives you a poison look. Alice can live with that. It's hard, <laughs> but yes, I was just going to say that's tough. It's really tough. She's been hurted today much more. That is a mm -hmm. tiny little sting. Then I guess the rest of the day no, well, it is already evening, so basically the, the, there dinner, is dinner. Early bed. Evening mm -hmm. passes, yes. You wake up in the morning, you make breakfast, uh, Louis picks you up at 10, yep. you go to the Bronx. Yep. He um, basically, um, as he approaches the area, he says, would you like to um, see the back of the building first? That would be exactly mm -hmm. my idea. Yeah. So the back of the building is actually, um, it's kind of like, you know, I mean, you know, you know, New York, uh, I don't, but you know, I sometimes have a feeling that they all look like, kind of like squares mm -hmm. and there was like yeah, four buildings to one square. Okay. And um, the back building is actually really an empty lot. There used to be a building there. So now there is mm -hmm. a couple of brick walls, some of them up to two, three meters high, but there's a lot of rubble. Mm -hmm. And then the other two buildings are still standing, but they are all empty. So it's really just the one that is still okay. left um, being lived in. But you know, but then there is no back door or anything. There's just there is. Way. Yeah, there is. Yeah, it still leads into the main hallway. Just so it doesn't mm -hmm. matter from which side you come. There is a fire escape. The fire escapes are usually on the front side. They are outside that you can see them. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we could try to sneak in. And she would just whisper to herself, not even really realizing that Louis is there. When it's dark. Just looking at a fire escape. We know which apartment it is we do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, second floor. So, uh, well, actually first floor because mm -hmm. we count from the ground floor. Yeah. Louis, do you by any chance know how, how busy is it in the evenings around here? It's not very busy, but it's also, and he looks at you, dangerous. Well, for you. Well, I know. Alice will, will have a, another look. She will pull out her little notebook and she will make some scribbles just to see a fire escape there. And you can reach it from down. She would probably have a good look and measure that she can really reach the ladder to get on top mm -hmm. of the fire escape. And uh, we'll have another look around. Then would shrug. Um, Louis, would you mind dropping us at Madame Lavance. Oh, no, not at all. And he takes you to the Petit Jésus. Alice will lock. Mm -hmm. Maxine opens. She lets you in. She eyes Dotty, but lets her in as well. Thank you, Maxine. I hope she doesn't have a customer. Uh, no, she's um, she is um, preparing some things. Um, I will announce your presence. Thank and you, she goes Frankie. in and she... And then she comes back and says, if you follow me, we will follow. You, um, well, she is, she's actually standing there behind this counter thing and she's mixing something. She says, ah, my children. Um, I was just curious because you know a lot. Um, oh, yes. Do you know any kind of like... Something you can inhale that would make you sleepy or drowsy. She turns to Maxine and t tells her a couple of things, Latin words, and Maxine comes back with three jars. And they contain, each of them contains some herb or something, some pl flower or plant. She opens the jar, she takes out one of each, holds it up, and she says, burn these together. The smoke will make you pass out. Thank you so much. That might be very helpful. But be aware that um, whoever inhales this doesn't only pass out, they will have visions. They may be unpleasant, but it takes you closer to the gods. Well, the ones I hope. We will see. Visions should be their smallest issue. I hope you're not going to use them on yourself. No. No, 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 no. Because you are not ready, child. I am done with visions and weird dreams, to be honest. It would be nice if... I could just restfully sleep at home, which is still not happening every night. Well, I can still offer you a sleeping draft. I have offered you this before. But you will sleep. Yeah, but I don't want to be drugged. I just want that weird lady to stay out of my house and out of my head. Dottie just basically, you can hear her sigh and, um, and Maman Lavo looks at her over your shoulder. And um, and she says, I know my child, this one is trying. Alice would be like, oh, I can live with that. But that will help very much. And everything you found out is helping enormously. Thank you so much. I hope we can close this off without more people dying. I certainly hope so. Because I know New Moon is getting closer. We don't have much time left. No. That was all. Thank you so, so much. Alice is shortly like, do I ask her for something to murder someone quietly in their sleep? 
<laughs> do you say this out loud or do you just think that? No, she thinks that and she's tempted to ask for something that is causing a massive headache and feeling really poorly. And again, she will just stop herself. Like, too too so easy. She... Too easy. He's so evil. So evil. He brought it on himself. If I had no, <laughs> no, it's 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 it's. I think for Alice, it's a lot just to think about it. That already helps. Of the mind. You take your things. Yes, you pay her. Yes, I will say um, thank you and wish her the best. Mm -hmm. um, she wishes you much success in your endeavors. You get into the car because Louis has been waiting. Okay, he takes you home. Um, and then, what do you do? Because it's now only like, you know, two o'clock, so it would be time for a late lunch. So if you want to make arrangements for him to pick you up and drive you there at night, you could do that now. How much days do we have till new moon? Three. Okay. Uh, we will definitely take the lunch, at mm -hmm. least a quick lunch, because I'm quite sure Dottie will make sure that Alice eats something. Mm -hmm. And then she will call the inspector. Sergeant. Sergeant. Why am I always calling him inspector? I have no idea. Updike. Uh, Baker. Ms. Baker. You can hear him bow through the <laughs> receiver. Would you by any chance either later today or tomorrow have time to meet up for coffee well i could make today when are you free when would you like to meet four o'clock four o'clock it is where i can't recommend um, coffee at the precinct you've had it before it's not the best Alice would think uh, what kind of place would be not too far away from the prison mm -hmm. and she would just name. Mm -hmm. I shall see you there, Miss Baker. Thank you. See you later. See you later. And he hangs up. What, why, why do you want to meet him? Going through all the options before making a decision. Very good. Maybe he knows. An official way how we can get inside. Maybe I should not ask him. Who is he? Let's meet him for coffee, anyhow. At least he mm -hmm. can know that we might have a chance to stop this. Mm -hmm. So you go to the coffee house, mm -hmm. he's there already. His marked car is parked outside. You come in, yep. he gets up, he bends at the waist and kisses your hand, Ms. Baker. Sergeant, thank you for taking time that short notice. Well, for you always. Um, the thing is, he's got a really booming voice and he is a very imposing mm -hmm. um, person. So everyone is looking at the two of you. Let's just uh, sit down and have a cup. He holds the chair for you. I will sit down. I will nod with a thank you. And he orders coffee for the lady. He himself has water. Maybe you should get a tea. That That's not against rules, even if you're in That sounds like what you're going to tell me is going to be so difficult to, to handle that I may have to steady my nerves. I'll have a tea, please, waiter. Well, y you know our special case. Of course, it's constantly on my mind. We might have this. Well, I don't know if I want to call it solution yet, but we might have an explanation and a way to stop more people from dying. I am very curious to hear it. Do you really? 
I am scared to tell you after all we've been through. Well, it was agreed that you would help with the investigation. Now you have taken over the investigation um, because it's nothing we can investigate because people without livers. So I really want to know, Ms. Baker. Uh, I hope this doesn't involve me shooting you in the lane. No, 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 no. I don't want to Good. shoot anyone. The idea is well, no I one. I shot you. No, well, you, you... It happened because it happened. It was a very special circumstance. You would never shoot me like this. In not insane life. He smiles at you. Um... So we know why the people take the, why the livers are taken. There is we do. a way to there are rituals and dark things that you can do when you have enough of livers. Well, I was locked up in a in a haunted house with you yeah. and people got drawn through mirrors and only one came back. So uh, I'm not surprised. They use it to move to another body to kind of live forever. I see. I know it sounds horrible, weird and insane at the same time. Well, it definitely sounds horrible. It definitely sounds weird and insane, but I'm not ruling anything out because I know you too well by now to think that you would come up with such a thing as nonsense. There is probably a lot of truth to that story and you are convinced. I would love to not to be, but we've seen too many information that points exactly to that. And people that are willing to have an whole orphanage die to live longer in a new body is kind of scary. That is also, I mean, to take the lives of children yes. is something that um, well, they is even worse. They don't care about which life, they just take what they can get, I think. I see. Um, so... The thing is, they are hiding in their apartment. And they're they? It's a couple. No? Everlast it's a couple? E yeah. The Morrisons? Y yes. Well, the Morrisons is... I would probably say the body. They are uh, quite older. But a couple, nevertheless. So, what you're saying is that at some point in the past, somebody decided to live forever, and since then has been stealing livers to jump from body to body, and the Morrisons are the most recent embodiment? Yeah, I think the initial start was more a survival idea, I see. because they were, well, their bodies were horribly murdered. You mean the original hosts were killed? Yeah. In the old days, white people did horrible things to black people. The thing is, they are I see. hiding inside. They have an, let's call it, artifact mm -hmm. that gives them the power to do as they do. If we get our hands on the artifact, they can't do anything anymore, then they are literally just the Morrisons. So you're proposing to burgle the place? I would love to not, but I have no idea if you have a chance to officially enter the apartment, because they haven't done anything illegal, as far as I know, and no. as far as you know. Well, I mean, I did investigate them. Yes, 
the upstanding citizens always pay their taxes, always pay their. F- well, they haven't even incurred any fines. They are just. They're staying nobody's out of ever trouble. complained about them. They're keeping to themselves. They are not really part they of the community. They don't drink, as far as we know. No one was ever arrested. So there are no ways how the police could enter to investigate. I'm afraid not. I mean, not legally. I would and not I... ask you to do anything illegal. Thank you, because I have sworn an oath. I just wanted to at least ask, not that afterwards I hear like, if you just would have asked, we could just have done this and this. Which brings me to the question of what is it that you are planning on doing, Ms. Baker? Do I even want to know? I honestly can't tell you because I am still unsure of what to do. My idea is definitely to find a way that no one gets hurt. Admirable. Admirable. I mean... They're an elderly couple. Yeah, but I don't know what kind of... No, I'm just thinking. Do we know of any health issues? Yeah, we know not. We do. We don't know what exactly, but we know Mrs. Morrison is has not left the apartment for. A Have long you time. thought about sending in a community nurse? Will they accept a white person for that? Well, it it's be. worth a try. It is. We were in the hospital nearby where the poor souls that probably died by now Westchester were there and the staff was also white, white right? Yeah. It might be an option. But I don't know how they will react to someone showing up unannounced and they will decline any help, I'm quite sure. But still, might be a good option. Thank you for the idea. I guess I will just keep you informed if we failed or succeeded. Please do. And whatever you do, try not to lose your liver. I don't think they will have much fun with my liver, to be honest. But, um, yeah. Too much coffee? And whiskey, probably, over the years, yes. Ms. Baker, and there you are. Still looking fresh and beautiful. I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, at least I hope you did not hear any new missing liver cases. We not to our not. knowledge. Okay. That's at least something. It is. And thank you for taking the time and for the maybe good idea. And I will call you when, as I said, I know if we solve the case or if I have to tell you that all hope is lost. Let's hope not. The only thing is, well, it will be a few more deaths and then they will stop because they got what they wanted. Until next time. Where we both probably will not be around anymore. That doesn't mean it's less of a problem. True. It's just a problem for someone else. Oh, Miss Baker. You are not to be defeated so easily. No. But uh, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. We will figure something out. Then uh, let's get back to work, I would say. Thank you for taking the time. Greetings to your lovely wife. Thank you. And he gets up. He pulls out the chair for you. So that you I will get, get up as he well. He bends at the waist. He kisses your hand as stiffly as always. He 
puts on his hat, he takes you to the door, holds the door for you, holds the door to the taxi for you. I will be nice and polite and say thank you and thank you and wish him a good rest of the day and we'll get What were you wearing? Trousers, obviously. Of course, of course. And we'll go back home. You go back home. Where Dottie awaits you. Um, she's holding Maeve in, in her arm. And as soon as Maeve sees you, she tries to wriggle free and jump at you. And she does. No, 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 Maeve. Stay with your mom. Maeve will hear nothing of it. <laughs> Go away, cat. Go. No. <laughs> I think Alice is quite easily defeated because she lost the cat. Yes. After dinner, just sitting down, making a plan? Of course. Rosby. That sounds good. So you have dinner. You sit down. So we have different options. That's good. I don't like any of the options, to be honest. So it's the question which one to pick. And I'm not sure how to decide. Um, option one is still the idea of kind of faking a fire and see if the fire brigade gets in, although then we involve people that should be there actually saving people and not be there to fake save people. Mm-hmm. You could just blankly walk in and try to talk to them, which honestly I think is the worst idea because they don't care, quite sure. Or maybe they will rather feel threatened. And I'm not sure what they will do when they are threatened. We could try to sneak in, although we need to be quick. And the risk is there that I am seen when I get up the fire ladder. You mean that we are seen when we walk up the fire ladder? When? Do you really want to be involved in something illegal, dear? Alice? Maybe it would be good if one of our private investigator companies... So that I can visit you in prison? Well, if not, we are both stuck there. But, well... We'll see. The other thing the sergeant... I can already imagine what your mother will say. Oh, she... She will blame me. She... She will blame both of us. Because she can do that very well. The other thing, the sergeant brought up the idea that since the old lady is sick, a house visit from the nurse just to check in, they heard that she didn't leave the house for a long time and they just want to offer service to see if they can help. Well, I should be that nurse and you can be my assistant. You know nothing about first aid and you are way too uh, sophisticated. It might give the option that you keep them busy and I sneak off. And when I try to keep them busy looking like a nurse, it'll actually look like a nurse a lot more than you would. Because the hospital staff was mainly white. Yes. So it's not that far fetched. At least we would be inside. If they even let us inside that's my main concern it might be very well that they say no thank you and close the door on us and that's it but we won't know until we try unless of course you really go for the let's set the place on fire and hope for the best honestly would rather try to sneak and break in before i call the fire brigade that would be the last straw because i would feel horrible knowing that we called them in and Somewhere else there was a real fire and people died because the fire brigade was not there in time. So, we need nurse outfits. That shouldn't be a problem. And we need black 
clothes on top of that. If the nurse thing fails, we need to change into black clothing and sneak in by night. That would also not be a problem. Okay. Alice definitely has black clothing. I'm 100% yes. sure. Yeah, I mean, it has to be kind of like fitting for what you're trying to do. So um, it would be trousers yeah. for sure, of because course. it's most comfortable. And I would in modern days would say a hoodie, but definitely then having like a black scarf or something on top that you can yeah. really hide as best as you can. I mean, those outfits, I mean, the thing with the nurses outfits, that's something that takes a little bit of ringing around, but you can definitely manage that. Yeah. Um. Especially, I mean, since, you know, even the, the community nurse, they would not be kind of like wearing one of those veil thingies no. with the wimples, but she would basically be wearing like um, a set. She would be wearing sensible shoes, sen a sensible skirt, preferably white, but she would also be wearing a coat over it. Yeah. So and no, Dottie would bring the bag that she has like it's, she does have a kind of like a first aid kit. Um, so and then you know she would and she she can and then she does you know she she takes her hair back in a bun and she can give this air of I'm a community nurse know what I'm doing and then you can you can use this to try and find out if you can get in so the idea is we try to get in if this fails we will need to wait until it's dark so probably going to the black cat for a drink if you are okay with it of course why wouldn't i be just wanted to ask alice we have spoken about this a couple of times there is nothing between james and i It would be okay if you say you don't want to go there. I know, and I respect that, and I'm happy that you respect my okay. feelings. But everything will be fine. Unless, of course, it makes you uncomfortable. No. Still curious, but I'll keep back your life. You make this so hard on me. Can't do you do it. Are you doing this on purpose? No. Do you want me to feel bad? No, I want you to feel good. That's actually the goal. But she we gets leave up. It. She can't like it. Is. She comes to you, which which she doesn't often do, and she takes your hand and she says, "One day, I promise I will talk to you about James and I." But today is not that day. You don't have to. It's not until of my business. until that day. Please just accept that I feel terrible that I let it go that far because it was unfair to him. And I don't regret it. I just feel for him. I misled him and that is terrible. Just to give you thinking material, you both are adults. You both decided to go that far. It's not your burden alone and your decision alone. Yeah, but you don't have to worry about me. If you want to worry about somebody, worry about him. I will always worry about you. The same you always worry about me. I don't think that. Yeah, that change. is very different, Miss Baker. No, it's exactly the same. Just different reasons to worry about we care for each other that's why we worry i think that's kind of weirdly enough normal it is it is good and i'm i mean and i'm but you're buying uh, the martini yes for sure should i have a martini before breaking in i'm not sure no afterwards we will have a martini if we're alive yes I have no idea. Alice. We don't know these people. We don't know what they're capable of. We don't. Of course. So are you going to use the are you going to use the herbs? I almost forgot about them. 
The thing is, we can't light them up when we both are inside as nurses. I don't think that would work, because we- Do you know what we could do? We could get an incense burner. We sneak- we- no, that would work, because it's gonna burn really slowly. So what we could do is we could take it with us, go in there if they let us, just hide it somewhere, light it, leave. And then come in later. It would it would be exactly like incense. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I almost fainted in church because sometimes the stuff that they're burning, I'm not quite sure if it's really just myrrh and frankincense. It's definitely worth a try. And I have an incense burner. It's not a problem. I have one. Yeah, we will buy a new one. That's, that's also not <laughs> no, it's not like I need them anymore. Well, you never know. Maybe we will come another case where it's useful. All right, then you can you can replace mine. <laughs> she laughs at you. So we will take that with us. Yes. Alice will anyhow phone around as well for. Oh, the gas masks are so big. At least back in that day, they, really are. they, they were, were really big. big. Yeah. question is if we try I'm just thinking about if we get in there and there's still that stuff lingering around we need to make sure that we are not inhaling it if not we will fall sleepy and as Mamo pointed out nicely might have visions and honestly I'm done with having visions how about we go in and really hold our breath and the first thing we do is we open the windows and then we go outside again and we wait we could also at least use some cloth, at least against smoke Wet and cloth. fire. It, yeah. it will help at least a bit. Mm -hmm. Wet cloth. Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. So Alice will have a canteen with water with her that they can wet in the cloth when they are outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh so you get everything ready. Mm -hmm. Do you call Louis to drive you? Um, no. Okay, you take a taxi. Right, take a taxi. That is that can drop us nearby. Mm -hmm. You go to the place. Mm -hmm. You. Well, you don't have to knock downstairs because it's pretty much just the, the door into the building and yeah. the door is kind of like hanging from its angles. It's kind of like, you know, loose, so you can yeah. just open it. Do you go straight up? Do we know if there are other people living? There are other people living in it hard as well. There is one or two more flats that look like somebody may be living there, but it's very quiet. There is no one. We should... She would whisper to Dottie, we should at least knock at one other door just to see yes, that I we agree. are going through and helping the whole house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you knock on the first mm -hmm. door. Make a luck roll with advantage. At some point. <laughs> I am. I can roll that, but I'm already successful. I rolled a 12. Good. The door opens. Out steps a man, you would say anything between 60 and 150. Wow. Very old, mm -hmm. very old. Um, he is stooped and he, he has, when he breathes, it's like a death rattle. And he says, yes, who are you? And Dot is like, Community nursing. <coughs> and about time to It's not so good anymore, is it? He sounds like he may have been smoking. Maybe there's something else wrong with his lungs. Maybe he was working in a factory where they produce paints or something. And um, and Dottie says, 
well, how about we go inside and we just take a good look at you? And um, she accompanied him inside. Do you go with them? Yeah, I will follow behind. Mm -hmm. I, I will carry her. I will be the assistant. I will, yeah, I will, I will keep yeah. my eyes low as soon as mm -hmm. he looks at me and I will carry her back, open her back, mm -hmm. give her the things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what she does is, I mean, because she has nursed you, you know that she's really good at this. So she has this down pat. So she basically tells him to sit down. She starts, you know, like, um, she touches, she puts her hand on his forehead and she says, well, the temperature is fine. She pulls down his eyes, his lower eyelids. She says, well, this is a little bit inflamed. Um, yeah, but there is something we can do about that. And then she feels his pulse. And, um, and then she says, um, and this cough of yours, is that something that is regular? <coughs> I've had it for 20 years, my God. <coughs> it's really the dry air, you know? And in winter, it's too cold, and in summer, it's too hot. <coughs> and she basically, um, she, she gives him, um, she gives him, a, an ointment which you know is eucalyptus mm -hmm. and she says she tells him to get hot water every so often and put a couple of drops into it and inhale yeah i think while dotty is working with him alice would like stand in towards the doorway of the room because she wants to have a look how many rooms there are and if doors are open and she would also try to listen if she can hear you mean in his flat or in his outside? Flat. No, in his flat. In his flat. Because we okay. know Mrs. Morrison should be in one of mm -hmm. the other rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So essentially, um, the flat itself consists, interestingly enough, it has three doors, which considering that it's mm -hmm. a very poor place. So you are in the living room and then there are three doors leading away from it. So maybe he's got a separate, you can't see it. So probably one is the kitchen, one is the bedroom, one is the okay. bathroom. Um, so it is a sizable apartment, um, and um, it's not well kept, but then again, he probably is simply too old to keep it up. You know, he, he's very weak, very weak. And, um, and uh, as, you, as you listen, you can hear movement upstairs of somebody walking upstairs. Yeah, you're on the ground floor. And they're on, you know that their flat is on the first floor. Okay, then I was met. So the old man we are talking is not is Mr. It? Morrison. That's no, the no, neighbor. No, no, no. Okay. No, no, you, you, because you said you wanted to knock on other doors yeah, as well. Yeah, but with so. lock, I would have hoped that no one is there. So you gave us exactly the opposite to that. Oh, okay. No, mm -hmm. because, I, okay, so here's my reasoning. I thought that by having someone appear and being there, you could kind of like keep up the pretense of actually working with someone that somebody might overhear. Yeah, That's I, where, I was, where the luck comes yeah, in. Yeah, I was more thinking we are knocking at the door and they hear Sorry, that we are no. community service, that that would be enough. But okay. Yeah, but uh, you know, now they've heard it and now they've heard that you're yep. basically spending time with this guy. So sorry, that was no, my no, reasoning. No, no, all, all good, all good. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay, then so, I would at least know roughly the layout of the apartment above should be the it's same. It's highly usually. likely that it's exactly the same. Okay, so basically um, once... I, yeah. I think anyhow, um, Alice would just, it, in a very low voice, would be like, would there be any chance I could just wash up my hands? <coughs> of course, the bathroom is through there. And, and uh, Dottie says, well, I, I will need to wash my hands as well. Mm -hmm. So then we know where the bathroom is. That mm -hmm. was her idea yeah. because the bathroom should be because you don't yeah. put the plumbing because of the pipes. Way. Yeah, the pipes you yeah. just yeah. drop them. Yeah. So when and you can actually see that they actually go through. You can see where they run along the yeah. the, the wall. Uh, um, good sir, and should we maybe set up a kettle for you that you can try the hailing? That that would be really lovely. And he points to the other door. That would be then the kitchen. And that's the kitchen. It's it's a smallish one, but he's got a he's got a chair and a and a t table in there, so he can he's got a kind of like a kitchen eat a kitchen dining room thing going. Mm -hmm. So you know. And interestingly enough, in contrast to the living room, the kitchen is very clean. It doesn't have much. I mean, like you see, like three or four plates that have seen better days, but they have been washed up. Mm -hmm. 
um, two knives and one spoon and two two um, two forks. Clean, old but clean. And there is a pantry, and there is some food. Mm -hmm. It's basic fare, but that is also in good order. So there is no mold. There is. It's not like oh god, this is this is. We have to name it if we wait one more day. So that seems to be the place that he keeps really tidy, and you find soap. Okay. As well, then so not we only was there hand, soap in the, bed, in, the, the in the bathroom, but there's also soap in here. Yeah, you set up the kettle. Yeah, and then you actually, Dory insists. The Dorothy insists on waiting until the kettle boils. Then she puts in the eucalyptus. She gives him the, and she explains to him how to do the mm -hmm. inhaling. And then he does, and the two of you take your leave. Yeah, go upstairs. We go upstairs. You knock on the door. We knock on the door. Alice is next to Dotty with the bag in her hand. The door opens in front of... Uh, well, um, the, the gentleman downstairs was a, an African-American. Mm -hmm. The man... Uh, another man opens the door. He's maybe 60, 65. Mm -hmm. Grey hair. Um, almost white, bushy white eyebrows. And he seems to be in fairly good health. Yes. Community nursing, says Dottie. Uh, uh, who sent you? And his eyes become kind of like slits. And Dottie looks at you. Well, my assistant and myself, we um, we are making the rounds. We were just downstairs with the gentleman downstairs and we're, well, we're trying to help him with his lung problem. And so basically we're making the rounds today. Alice will add to that, although I already forgot how the hospital was. Westchester. Westchester. Uh, we are working together with the West. Chester Hospital. They got some donations that we can more go and visit the community to really help. Make a persuade or something like that. There is there is persuade. Yeah, I don't know. Alice is in theory at least she has a chance. It's better than luck. It doesn't mean that I'm <laughs> well, rolling better, is than, better luck. than your luck. I'm not rolling better than my luck. Although let me see do i want to spend luck points i think i do it's okay. worth it because i'm close to a success mm -hmm. i will spend four luck one two three four and then i have a success in persuasion okay um he basically oh, Chester. well yeah they they are a good place and um i uh, well then come inside uh, but I'm warning you she will not respond and Dottie looks at you puzzled and then the two of you look at him my wife I suppose you're here I mean I, I there's nothing wrong with me but I, I will show you you follow him yes into the bedroom. You see a woman in her 60s lying in the bedroom, in bed. You can now make a medicine roll or something like that. First aid. Is there medicine? Yeah, there is. Um, let me see. Okay. I have first aid. And I have medicine. First aid is the better value, so it's a question. Yeah, go ahead and roll whichever. No. Nah. Far away. No. Far away. Okay, um, Dottie, however, passed hers easily with 24, and she looks at her and she says, When did she suffer the stroke? And he says, Well, in October. I found her like this in the morning in the bathroom. And you can see that um, she is like, she's had a severe stroke. So the right side of her face is completely, um, well, fallen. 
um, with all of the relevant signs, you know, mm. um, lopsidedness and all of that. And um, <clears throat> you can also tell that her right arm is completely limp. It's basically just lying there. Mm -hmm. um, and she breathes really, really ruggedly. And she looks at you uh, out of eyes. You can tell that she's probably aware of her surroundings, but she has this typical, you know, like, yeah. um, and he says, and she doesn't talk. She knows what's going on most of the time, but she doesn't talk. So what, what are you going to do about that? And Dottie looks at him and she says, your wife would be in a much better position if we took her to hospital. I mean, caring for her here must be very tough for you. Because he is kind of slender. Mm -hmm. um, and while she isn't exactly big either, I mean, lifting her and lifting somebody who is partially um, <clears throat> paralyzed is quite, quite difficult. Alice would not so much focus on the talk because she knows Dottie knows that well the uh -huh. stroke was i think obvious enough especially after dotty pointed it out alice would look around a if she would see a stone or anything an that would have that role, and she would also so want to have a closer look if she can maybe see if bandages around the wrist or the hand or something because they one of them needs to let blood regularly oh, very good and he's okay, so looking much too happy for that so he he's not getting bonus points at the moment for mela so she so she <laughs> she she would probably like try to look professional like going to the wife like feeling her pulse just mm -hmm. to see if she can get the wrist or the Spot hands to see that so let's see that is much better spot hidden is a hard success okay so first of all um you don't obvi you don't see an obvious artifact soaked in blood that was clear if not you would not <laughs> yeah it. but you know it does it does help to look but you you can't find that but a um, fancy decorated box or something like that would be the guess yeah no not in this room mm -hmm. but you're only in the bedroom yeah you have not really been anywhere yeah. else um that, funny you should say that because it never occurred to me that one would see if somebody had to to, to regularly one, uh, to, to to let blood one pint of uh, thereof once a week uh, every two weeks yeah she does have um uh, incisions mm -hmm. in her mm -hmm. arm mm -hmm. pit yeah in her in her elbow pit yeah yeah alice would just put the hand right back inside tuck her in and would step back her, her pulse is not the stablest but um I, i'm afraid um mr morrison um if your wife is in grave danger if we don't take her to hospital she may die and much more quickly than you might think Oh, 99 have persuaded <laughs> Ooh. As if I didn't know that girl. And he um, he, he gets a little bit aggressive. Um, Dottie takes a step back instinctively. Uh, is, is, well, we, we can at least try to make it maybe a bit easier for her here and, and tell you one or two things if that would be in your way sir um he looks at uh, so dotty for him is kind of like a non-entity i mean he's not happy with her but um you can make a persuade draw you're turning on the charm yeah she's trying to mm -hmm. she's trying to i can oh, also yeah. charm him that's but that's, that's okay a, a charm is well is a good stat for although i mean then take charm well e for yeah, for charm, it's a critical success. For persuade, it would just be a hard success. Oh, well, um, you, you do persuade him. Um, he takes to you because he also notices that you are older. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of like a little more inclined maybe to listen to you. And he says, so what are you suggesting? And, um, and then he says, oh, let's step outside because I don't want her to know and um, to overhear it. Um, and he takes you outside immediately. 
else you do. Oh, yes. That, that was her hope, although there are two other rooms, although she highly doubts it's in the bathroom. That would maybe it's in the it's in the tub where he I mean that would be a place where you could keep it because in the tub when you soak it in blood. Yeah, but at the same time they're kind of It's not like they'll have visitors. Yeah, but they're kind of worshipping that thing. I'm not sure if you would put it <laughs> no. in a bathtub. Yeah. It's a, it's something well, you never know. Desperate people, you ne desperate you measures. Never, you never know. Give me a spot hidden as you enter the okay. bedroom. Uh, the, the, the living room. I am scared to pick a set of dice. Spot hidden. N no. I hope Dottie sees something. Because I rolled a 93. She I... rolled an 80. Great. The two of you, um, he, he, he motions to mm -hmm. a chair. He offers you a chair. He doesn't offer a chair to, to Dottie. So Dottie, Dottie's fine. She just stands there. So what, what, what is it that you're suggesting? Well, we, we could make some bandages with some like calming oils that makes it easier for her to breathe because she seems to have problems breathing properly mm -hmm. and it's it's quickly done it will not cost you anything and yes of course not because i don't have money if you want money then you've come to the wrong place we're not here for money um, but we could leave a few things for you as well that you could repeat that because it's not that difficult and you took care of your wife so far very well. Dottie nods as well and she starts rummaging in the bag that you have given her in the meantime and she basically starts taking out little things like bottles and stuff. So, so it's a question if uh, setting up a kettle with some warm water and maybe you would have like uh, should bowl. bowl, thank you. <laughs> a, a bowl where we can soak them in t together with the oil. Mm, yes, uh, yeah, I, I can, I can, I can make a kettle. Yes, and he goes into the kitchen. Alice is. She will look around while he's gone. Mm -hmm. Not so much to see if she can find that thing, because that would be like, roll again, roll again. But she would look mm -hmm. for a place where she could discreetly put the incense. Because she's not worried about the wife, that she would mm -hmm. just jump up and be... Mm -hmm. He is the one, and he suspects mm -hmm. he is tingling between living room mm -hmm. yeah. and... In, as a matter of fact, what you have noticed is, and that's also why you didn't see anything, this place is completely cramped, full of stuff. It's, it's almost like, well, come to think of it, it looks like somebody has deposited six lives in this one bedroom flat, which they have. It's full of stuff. There is hardly room to, there's not room to swing a cat, there's hardly room to walk. Mm -hmm. It's almost like there is this little path that leads in. There are shelves kind of like stacked next to each other. There are, there is a trunk somewhere at the back that you can see and everything is full of stuff, full of stuff and also weird stuff because there are, there are, it, it almost looks like Le Petit Jésus. Mm -hmm. Not so, so surprising, to be honest. It's not so surprising, and it would not be a problem to p to place something somewhere. Yeah, like, I don't know if there's at least a couch or an armchair or something like that. Yeah. She, she would pick... There is a couch on which he has put stuff. And then there's, it, it seems like he lives in the, in the, in the, uh, on the, on the armchair. That, that would be, she would find a place that's nearby where he mm -hmm. can really see it because it doesn't make sense to put it somewhere far off yeah mm -hmm. and um, she would uh, prepare and stash it there mm -hmm. and then can you make a sleight of hand check for me yes let's do that that is a success good okay you find a place where you can put it and um dotty follows you with her eyes mm -hmm. and she rolls a 27 on her um spot hidden 
So it means she passes, but she also gives you the thumbs up in terms of where you've put it, even though I know where it is, I can't see it. Yeah. So. And, um, and you light it, I assume. I'm torn between lighting it now because he could, we could all smell it before we... But I mean, you will have to light it sometime. Oh, you mean after you have treated the wine? Yeah, I think Alice would okay. prep it. She, she would probably... Mm-hmm. I'm quite sure they would have um, maybe a scarf or, or gloves or something. She she would just probably by accident drop them nearby on the floor that she could be like, oh, I'm missing. They must drop them in the living room mm-hmm. that she can go back. Mm-hmm. And um, then we would try to at least do a little bit of nice treatment. Mm-hmm. For the old lady, just I think the idea is really just to to yeah, if if something warm and and good smelling, it might help at mm-hmm. least a little bit. Okay, so you go in. He doesn't go with you. Mm-hmm. And although you basically... Alice would ask him because she wants to show him what he needs to do if he wants to repeat that to make okay, life so, better. Okay, um, so then he he does. He follows you and you do the things and then um he's like yeah well and um and and uh, you leave me these jars and noddy says yeah, uh, jo- uh, dolly says yes here is here are the jars and we will just leave them here and you know and uh, uh, and we will come back with more in two weeks time they should last you until then and um, you can make a psychology roll for me okay let's see no, that's a 98. I have no idea who that man is and what he's thinking. <laughs> okay, so basically um, you finish, mm-hmm. you walk out and then what do you do? Well, we, we don't Same. walk out completely. I will... Yeah, no, you will walk out. I mean, you walk out of the bedroom. The bedroom. Yeah. We will uh, go through the stuff and I would be like, because he would be with us at least at the yes, moment. Yes, he follows you. Um, um, Dorothy, did you see my scarf? Your scarf? No. No. You had it when you walked in, though. Uh, so would you mind? It might be that I dropped it in the living room. I will just grab it. Uh, he, he nods. Uh, she would step inside the living room. And, Do- and Dottie keeps talking. Dottie now addresses him again and she basically gives him gives her uh, gives him her name and she basically says that she will come back in two weeks' time and what will be a good day. And uh, Alice you know... will be quick because she knows where mm-hmm. she dropped it. She will mm-hmm. light the incense burner and will wrap her scarf and be quite quickly out with, I found it, thank goodness. And um, I-, I hope your wife is feeling maybe a little bit stronger and this will help and then we will see you in a bit again and dotty in quite a commanding voice as well alice there is one more flat in this house and then we will move on to the next apartment block let's see if there is anyone in here upstairs if they're at home and the two of you walk out mm-hmm. thank you and closes the door behind day, you. sir good day and dotty actually makes her way up yeah the we stairs. are going up and Let's see if someone is there. 62, you are unlucky, no one's there. So she she does this and she does it. Community nursing and you wait. But yeah, nobody and quite loudly we will go yeah. downstairs yeah. and no one is there. And next time we're mm-hmm. here, we should check. And mm-hmm. that poor lady and that poor old man. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, we will And you outside. leave the building. And we leave the building. Because we would have gone inside in the afternoon. Because it shouldn't yes. be too long. No. And Alice, when we're outside, Alice would look up again just to make sure. She would have looked inside as well that the windows are closed. The windows are closed. And, um, well, it's... Because you did... He does know one thing. Um, the problem is if, if, he, if she gets cold. Yeah. That's it. No, the thing is, yeah, although in the living room she's not so... It's important that the living room, the windows are yeah. not open. No, the, the windows are closed. Then we will walk towards the black cat. You walk towards the black cat. You arrive at the black cat. Um, you go inside. 
I think make a yeah in make a luck roll. Yeah, in in Dottie's bag, I could imagine yeah. that we maybe uh, stored at least shawls that we could throw. Yes, over you, 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 yes, just you can, at you least can, to yeah, yeah. You 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 get you did do something to hide your nurse. And that look. would be the idea that we yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, it's not a problem. And uh, definitely no luck. Far away from okay. luck. Okay. You walk inside. Um, there are a few patrons. There is no Louis. There is no James. That's fine. You um, you didn't want to drink, so you basically go for a Coke, I suppose. Yeah, or order two Cokes. Yeah. And I'm not sure mm -hmm. if they are at least serving like snack sandwiches or anything they, like that. They are. Then they are. I would order a sandwich that we can share. Oh, you share one whole sandwich. I, know, with I will That's probably. Like, oh my god. We have to sit here for a while, so I will buy two that we can just yeah. take our time. Yeah. And you wait. We wait, and I think in between we go to the restroom to switch into the dark clothing. Mm -hmm. Which. Nope. Let's see how people re react to this. At an 80, nobody notices. <laughs> Perfect. They're like, what? Perfect. Because I assume that you still wear your, your, um, your, oh no, would you, you would probably be taking off your coats when you're inside. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is a, cha it is a change, but for some reason people either don't notice it, they really don't, or they don't care. They don't care. It's, yeah, we will see. So we wait in the black cat until it's getting darkish. Until it's getting dark, so it's April, so it's probably happening around half seven. And we will see next time what happens at half seven. Oh, God. <laughs> it's already that late. <laughs> yeah, um, so in two weeks, we will see what we will see. We will see what we will see. I'm really curious. I'm kind of happy that we don't have to face two adults that are very strong but maybe just one we will see and until then we wish you a pleasant evening have fun listening to this watching this and we will talk to you in two weeks time take care bye bye bye